a lot of us struggle with anger. Is that something you've struggled with? And how have you? Hell yeah, it's something I struggle with <laughs> because you're frustrated. I'm so grateful I'm doing my podcast because I didn't know anybody else who did this until I had Michael Phelps on. I tend to self-harm where I punch myself in the head, I hurt myself, and Michael Phelps on my on our interview on, on the Unbreakable uh, podcast said he took a golf cleat one time and hit himself in the head. I was like, oh, it's not just me. Oh my God, I'm 53. It's the first time I heard anybody else tell me that. There's a scene in the MVP movie where Nate yeah. is just beating the hell out of himself. I think I learned that from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a self-harmer in that way. And um, I try not to hurt others, and especially as you kind of got more and more involved in mixed martial arts, it kind of gave you the know-how not to do anything. Yeah, what did being a fighter teach you about managing aggression? Taught you to be a lot more secure in yourself. And somebody says something to you, like, all right, you're a cute kid and you can walk away. Why? Why, why did that, why did being a fighter teach you how to control your power? It just makes you a lot more secure in what you're able to do when you walk in a room. So you know you can handle yourself in the ring, okay. so somebody oh, yeah. comes, yeah. steps yeah. up to you, you're like, yeah. I, I don't right. need to prove anything to you. Yes, I mean, I sat there and got my, handed me my Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture, and the Jay Harons of the world, and you know, Tyron Woodley's, and you know, to Rashad Evans, and Shell Sonnen, and goes on and on and on. We're okay over here, I'm good. But, but also I know, like, I don't need to show my manhood with this cat, because I'm, I've done it a million times over here. But also, the way I view fighting, our team, try to make it like, we don't care if we win or lose. We can care less, we take the ego out of it. We just wanna make it the worst afternoon for you when you walk in there. So even when I'm training my guys, I kind of giggle to myself, like, oh man, this is about to suck for this cat. Now they may win, but it's gonna suck for you. And it just gives us this relentless attitude. And same thing, I, I kind of use that in life. I'm just relentless, 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 relentless. I want them in that case, you go, oh my God, enough. Like, why is he keep coming forward? Why does he keep walking forward? Just Get off, get off me already. And I've used the same approach in life. And it's kind of that relentlessness, not afraid to win or lose or to get hurt or to get beat up has allowed me to get to where I am. That's the getting knocked down and getting rejected and uh, taking lumps. And I lost every day on the way up, but it turned out I won in, in the end. Yeah. The thing that, I, that I'm left with as I think about what we've been talking about is, you know, relentlessness is mm -hmm. this theme up throughout it. it you talk about it in yeah. the book as like this essential thing to this unbreakable mindset. Yeah. But it also seems like there's a darker side if, you've, if you're in an environment like pro professional sports or no, being in the military. No, we're secure ourselves. Well, when does that relentlessness go? How do, you, how do you redirect the kind of intensity that it takes when you're in, these, in the ring, on the field? That's where you find those teams. And that's where you open up and you talk about it, whether it's therapists. And I tell people, I tell sports teams now, we've got to be a lot more proactive about our mental health, not as reactive. Pro like, and we need to get more proud of our mental health scars. When you break your arm, you put a cast on, everybody signs it, right? We're excited. We don't do the same thing with mental health. I am now clearly doing it. And I tell these guys, you don't just run 40s when you think you're getting slow. You don't just catch passes when you think you have the drops. You do it every single day of your life. You've got to do the same thing with mental health. There's probably not enough therapists out there for us yet, and you got to start looking at therapists, coaches. So until then, let's start leaning into each other. So let's start even using that darkness and to share it with each other and open up, because it'll probably lighten somebody else's load also. And so, that darkness gets a lot lighter when you start sharing it. So it's not about dialing back how relentless you are. It's about, no. it's about how to direct it? Yeah, you keep doing it, but also, you want to take, and even like my pain, I take my pain and I use it to motivate me for something else. But now I know to have an outlet for the pain too, and that's talking, using the words, opening up to anybody and everybody, talking about it on national television, talking about it with my son, talking about it with a group of combat vets, talking about it with everybody else. That vulnerability, that's what makes me strong. Me and Randy Couture choking each other in the cage is not the strongest thing I do. This is the strongest thing I do. Wow, that's really powerful. For sure. What about pranks? You're yeah. a legendary prankster. Yeah, because laugh, that? laughter is what I gotta do to get myself out of this a lot. So when I'm having a panic attack on TV, again, I'll, I'll push out a joke because I need to laugh a lot. I'll play jokes on people and 
What's the craziest prank you've ever pulled? So I take everybody's phone, and if you're, now they know, so it doesn't happen anymore. But I used to take people, and Strand was the first guy, the guy I got. And your phone, I'll, if it's unlocked, I'll take it, and I'll send somebody a text message from your phone, and then I'll erase the sent message so you don't know you send it. Oh. So oh, I've had Strand oh, no. reveal a lot of really compromising things about himself to a lot of people. And then I'll call back and be like, are you serious? Am I serious about what? Are you serious about this and this? And he's like, what are you talking about? I didn't say that. You just texted it to me. So, yeah, I texted Randy Couture from Chuck Liddell's phone that he took a Viagra before their second fight because he wanted to take their relationship to the next level. And then <laughs> just sit there and this text comes back. Hey, these are the two baddest dudes on the planet. And the text comes back and it just says, what? Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. And Chuck's like, what is this? I go, you might have texted someone. Yeah, I've, I've gotten uh, a slew of bumper stickers. I put them on Howie Long's car and because no one messes with Howie. So I'll put these bumper stickers on his car. They're really, really raunchy. And he drives around Beverly Hills. It's Howie Long. Like, no one does it to Howie Long. I do it to Howie Long. And, it, man, the other guys just die laughing. They crack up. So it's hard to be friends with Jay Glazer. <laughs> oh, man. You're an optimist, aren't you? Oh. Or are you? I don't know about that. Yeah, are you an optimist or a pessimist? I always think the world is crashing down around me, so I don't know if that's an optimist. I just got to deal with that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm always thinking the sky is falling. That's what my depression does to me. So that's the way you feel. I'm a fighter, and I fight back against it. That's I've, how I feel, yeah. I've seen you say that the universe conspires to help us, though. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that fit? I learned fit? that MVP. How does that fit into that? Because I feel like the like the universe is crashing and and everybody hates me and everything hates me and the universe wants bad for me and then I know I, I reason with myself I talk it out I'm like no it, like if the universe is really against us we'd all be dead. That's true. Right? Yeah. We all go through a tragedy that would befall us every single second of our lives. It's not true. These are the lessons of the Jersey Shore. You go in the ocean. <laughs> you go in the ocean, you're like, that you get stuck could... with a hypodermic needle. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's funny. No one's ever asked me that. My fight's every day. So then I think that, make, that means you choose to be an optimist in the face of a lot of negativity. I'm choosing to fight back against it. And yeah, I'm choosing to fight back. And now I have these tools. And even like, listen, I'm 53. I just got engaged. Um, oh, congratulations. Beautiful Rosie Tennyson. The Tennyson twins, she and her sister are the Doubleman twins, remember them. <laughs> and, um, but it's the first time in my life I haven't pushed someone away, haven't sabotaged. Because when you feel unworthy, you tend to sabotage and you're going to speed up what you think is already intended to happen to you. That's, that's pessimistic. It's not optimistic. So I'm like, well, this person's going to leave me anyway, so let me speed it up. So I've done that to everybody else I've ever been with. This is the first time in my life, and again, I'm 53, I want to show people it's not too late. First time in my life I've ever truly found, felt this love where it's gonna last, it's gonna be here, and it's forever. And to her, I opened it up to her. I had a little meltdown like two, three weeks ago, and she was like, hey, 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 I'm not going anywhere. I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. And that's the first time someone's ever really done that for me. I've talked to a lot of psychologists on the show, and one of the things that I've, heard, I've learned is that just to rephrase something from I feel this way to it I am the having the feel feeling, way, yeah. like my mind yeah. is telling me I feel like, Wrapping it up so that what, that part of your brain that knows you're not gonna you're not gonna die mm -hmm. recognizes the part that feels that you are. Right, right, right. And right. you've talked about that a lot. Yeah. Is that part of what you do? Is you remind yourself that this part? Oh, that's... I have a whole thing that I do every day. I get up. I have this whole thing. I do this breath work and this meditation, and I write a gratitude list of ten things I'm grateful for from the day before every day, before I ever look at my phone every day, and before I go to bed every day, I do this little breath work meditation, and I. I kind of throw a party in my heart. I celebrate three things that have happened that day that's been great. I throw a party. I really, really like meditate, let it fill me up, and it's better to go to sleep and just come back from a party. And often it will lead to bluer skies when you wake up the next day. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Jay Glazer. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.